Halleluja. Amen. Wow. Uh, let's appreciate the worship team. I would love to recognize in absentia, ma'am. Um, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, what that woman has, I would love God to give me at least half eh, of what she has with God. Praise God. Yes. So we have come to drink from her. Hallelujah. Uh, you might see us ministering, but there is something we are doing. Praise God. You have a gift in mom. And uh, some of you, it strikes me that you don't see that. Hmm? No, you can be so close with someone, you don't know what you have. Praise God. So, pray for her and honor her. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sit down. We can have our seats. Praise God. Yesterday we started something um, that was a, how I could see your faces yesterday. I, I think we need to do some more work. Amen? Amen. What do you think? Hallelujah. Amen. My name is John Muvevi Mutavi. I'm born again. I love Jesus Christ. He is my savior. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I am a young man, yes, but I believe I've seen something in God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so I stand before you uh, as someone who is also seeking after God as you are. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So allow me to show you some few things that I've seen in God. Hallelujah. Now, uh, yesterday, we were talking about seasons. We were talking, there is a verse I found on the screen. You think it's Daniel something 21. Huh? Daniel 2.21. Let's start there. Because uh, it was a, yes, yes. This was not part of my curriculum today. But I'd love to start here. Let's start here. Praise God. So there are things we established. And one of the things that I said is that it is time for the church to begin to understand the times we are in. Praise God. Hallelujah. I also say that God created the ordinances of heaven. And we saw that in Jeremiah chapter 31. And the Bible says that he, in Genesis, that he gave them dominion. He gave them rule over the earth. Praise God. To determine times and seasons on the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just love to go in uh, depth in what I said yesterday. Praise God. And there are things I would love to establish. There are so many things that are in my spirit to share, but I will share whatever is allowed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. One of the things that I've learned as I've um, matured in God is that there is a responsibility upon every teacher to understand what to give, the quantity to give it, and the quality of how to give it. Praise God. So there are things that God may teach a man, but because of the congregation and their growth in God, there are things that are not allowable to him to share. So you can be with a man of God for 50 years, and there are things that God shared with him when he began his work with God. And he will never share those things. Because there are, you know, the Bible talks about how Paul um, ascended in heaven. And the Bible says that he was in the third heaven. Praise God. And the Bible says that the things he saw and he heard were things that were not, he was not allowed to say them. Praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. There are also things John saw, John the Apostle. There are things he saw, and the Bible says that the angel of the Lord told him to not share those things. He says, seal them up until a time. Praise God. So the fact that you open the Bible to read does not mean the Bible is open to you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. 
And so it is important that we understand what God gives is important for our growth. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday at night, uh, as we were having the revivals, um, one of the things I was sharing, I told you guys, those who are there, I told them that, anyways, let's start. If I go there, we'll not start. Now, Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible says, and he changes the times and the seasons. Praise God. He changes the what? The times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. My God. Uh, just take a minute and speak in tongues, if you can. Take a minute and speak in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, just, just pray. Just for a minute. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things we need to understand also as the body of Christ is the current revelatory position of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain what I mean. Okay. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 verse 14. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. All right. It says, but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice. And said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. He says, For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He says, And it shall come to pass in the last days. I told you to underline that, okay? In the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It says, on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, those days of my spirit, I also told you to underline that. And they shall prophesy. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yesterday we talked about uh, uh, Kronos and what? Huh? Okay. For those of you who are not there, <laughs> you can visit the archives. Praise God. The media team will, will share the link. Amen. Now, there are things that I want us to see. There are certain manifestations in time that were prioritized by God. Let me give an example. In the Old Testament, the, what do we call them? Um, I don't want to use hard English. The appearances of God were determined by the people he was appearing to. Let me give an example. Because of the nature of the, the rebellious nature of the people in the Old Testament, God could not appear in human form. God would appear in something that you cannot worship, something that is not tangible. So God appears like a cloud. Praise God. If God would appear as a table in that time, they would create tables, start worshiping them. Praise God. Okay. Are you following me? Look at, okay. Mkae ni kama munaelewa because you are discouraging me. Ninakaa ni kama Okay. Yes. Muniangalie kama munaelewa. Sindio? Yes. At least if you if you have writing material at least even if you're not writing just pretend you're writing. Uh it is encouraging me. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now. In those times 
the spirit of God had not been poured upon flesh. Praise God. So Joel, by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that he begins to write. He says, these are the signs that will be in the latter days. In fact, that word for last days, okay, that word last is eschatology. Okay, eschatology. The same way if you, go, if you have gone to Bible school or you have done CRE, you have come across that word somewhere. Talking about uh, Revelation and the book of Daniel that talk about the last days. All right? Now, he says, these are the signs that will be in the last days. He says, the spirit of God will be poured upon all flesh. He says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Praise God. Now, if you go to the Old Testament, it was not given to every man to be a prophet. Praise God. It was not what? It was not given to every man to be a prophet. God used to function in three offices. If you are not in that office, forget about functioning in God. He used to function with kings, with prophets, and with priests. Praise God. So the language of the Old Testament, you would see the Spirit of the Lord came upon this one. And he began to do what? Come on, someone. Talk to me. Thank you. He began to do what? To prophesy. But you see, if you look at the life of Moses, there is something Moses prayed to God. He says, Moses made a prayer. He says that he wishes that all the children of God be prophets. Praise God. Amen. Now, the writing of Joel is fulfilled in Acts for the first time. Are you listening to me? Yes. The writing of Joel is fulfilled in Acts for the first time. So, that is a sign that the last days have begun. Praise God. Amen. So, according to the timeline of God, there are dispensations of the move of God. Let me explain. If you go to the Old Testament, the person of God that was revealed was the Father. Amen. So, they knew the Father. Okay, they didn't know the Father. They knew about the Father. All right? Praise God. Those guys didn't have anything tangible that they can touch of God. Only a few people had. And these few people had to be in the three offices of the Old Testament. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, after that, there came another era. The Bible says, give me Luke chapter 16, verse 16. I hope it is that verse. Luke 16. 16. Yes, thank you. Now, the Bible says the law and the prophets were until who? John. John. It says, since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into it. John was a mark of another dispensation. John the Baptist. Okay? So Jesus comes and says, among men born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. He says, but the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. Come on, guys. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Where is the keyboard guy? Come and help me. We, we need to soothe, soothe these guys. Come and help me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Uh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Encourage me, guys. We, need, we have a lot of things to do. Yeah? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, so I want you to see, John was a mark of another dispensation. Okay? And in that dispensation, God begins to do a new work. The Bible says that is when the kingdom of God came. So the Bible says John was given an assignment by God. It says he came to preach repentance of sins and the coming of the kingdom of God. All right? So whatever John was doing 
was to prepare to set the way for something new. Praise God. Now, the Lord Jesus comes and is a cousin of John. By the way, John did not know Jesus was the Messiah. That is why he came baptizing. Because that was the only way he could know. Jesus was his cousin. But he didn't know. Hmm. Praise God. So John went baptizing. So the Bible says the coming of Jesus. It says, I baptize you with water. But he comes one who will baptize you with what? With fire and the Holy Ghost. Now, at the coming of Jesus, there is another ministry of the Godhead that is revealed. The Son. So them who are of the old had scriptures. Those scriptures, okay, were given to them by the Father. But they pointed to the Son. Yet the Son comes among them and they cannot recognize him. So Jesus comes and says, you guys call yourselves professors of the law. Yet that same law testifies of me. And I stand before you and you cannot recognize me. Praise God. Amen. So the dispensation of the Son comes. Praise God. Amen. Now there's something I want to show you that is different. We are still in times, eh? but I want to, to get you somewhere. We are told that there was a pool in Bethesda. And the Bible says that once in a while, an angel would come and stir the water. And the one who got in first would be healed. Now the Bible says that there was a guy who had stayed there for how many years? That he ate. Now it tells you the people of the old had a way of accessing healing. But it was not the fullness of this thing. Praise God. If you are not a prophet, if you are not a priest, if you are not a king, you are not entitled to the Spirit of God. Now, let me give another example. Jesus is in the temple. Jesus is teaching. And as he's teaching the Spirit of God, the presence of God is so strong, people begin to manifest demons. Praise God. And then the Bible says, the people of that time marveled. It says, what manner of teaching is this? For with power and authority, he commands demons to live. In fact, the, what? <laughs> they say, he does it without invoking the name of God. Read your Bibles. It means the ministers of the old also had ways of dealing with unclean spirits. Praise God. Amen. And so Jesus comes and there is another dispensation of the move of God that is opened. Now this dispensation is only determined by time. Because if that time does not come, God will not do what he wants. Praise God. Amen. Now, the people who do not discern the timings of the day, they missed out on Jesus. Praise God. They missed out on what? Now, Peter stands up, begins to tell them, <laughs> my friends, it is only morning. These people cannot be drunk. This is the opening of another dispensation because the sun has left. Praise God. The sun has what? Has left. Now the time is for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is revealed to the world. The Bible says he comes with power at the day of Pentecost. Huh? Today we are not Pentecostals. Those who are... 
That is the name we have taken up in the church. It's not wrong. But I want you to understand this. The only people who are not celebrating Pentecost were the people, were the Christians. You didn't get that one. Okay. Praise God. So Peter says, Joel said to us that we will know the last days when the Spirit of God has been poured. Now the Bible says that sermon, the beginning of this sermon, okay, to the end, it's a whole sermon that Peter taught. The Bible says that day 3,000 souls came into the kingdom. 3,000. Now, I want you to realize the significance of this because I want you to see this. I want you to see this. In the time of Jesus, men could not get born again because it took a sacrifice that would establish a covenant. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even the disciples. In fact, Jesus says, I am alone until I die. He says, a corn of wheat cannot multiply unless it falls to the ground and does what? Now, Peter, I want you to see, if you read scripture in the New Testament, there are things you will begin to see, especially with John, okay? Um, let me give you an example. Jesus comes to the temple and says, in three days I will destroy this temple and in I will destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. Then John comes and says, Jesus said that at that time, okay? And then after Jesus has gone, now John is writing about Jesus, the testimony of Jesus. And he says, he spoke this concerning his own death. Those t that time, they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Now, you will come and understand that there are things that Jesus begins, began to speak that they, ha they had no insight into. So Jesus said it so that when they receive the Holy Ghost, they would receive insight into, that, into, into those things. Praise God. Now, Peter here is not learned. Peter is not a Pharisee. Huh? Peter is not a scribe. Peter is an unlearned man, but he has been with Jesus. The Bible says the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God came, Peter got boldness. He stood. And in discerning the times, it's somewhere I'm bringing you. Okay. Listen, we are doing evangelism. I'm talking to the people who are evangelizing. We are doing evangelism. And there are times that the Holy Spirit will lead you out to people if you do not understand what his current revelatory position is. You will not get results. If Peter would have stood the day before the infilling of the Holy Ghost, 3,000 people would not have come. This celebration that these people were celebrating was not for a day. It was like the marriages of the Jews. It's not for a day. It's like a whole week. Praise God. Amen. Now, the reason why we need to discern these things is because even concerning your life huh? see the bible says that he doesn't start anything he has not finished he sees the end from the beginning all right your life is not just okay let me just give points the thing I want you to, the point that I want also to bring across is this. Let's go to, okay. Give me verse 18. Okay, yes. This. I will pour out in those days of what? Days of what? Now, who has read scripture and has seen something like in the day of the Lord? You have seen it in the Old Testament and you have seen it in the New. 
my God. Wameenda tena. All right. I wish this could be a discussion because the way you are looking at me. Um You see, everything that happens in this world eh, does not begin here. Okay? It does not do what? It does not begin here. If there comes a time in the life of men that certain spirits arise and we start hearing of killings, those things do not begin now. I'm talking to people of Nakuru. Praise God. Now. God is the one who controls times and seasons. Okay? But I want you to see this. There is a privilege. Let me just cut to the chase. I'll go direct to the point for today. There is a privilege God has given to his people. of being in charge of times and seasons the church is not under the mercy of time and season we cannot live out of it in this world okay all right mm. okay let me let me try and give you verses and we try and connect these things okay so, so. are we ready all right I want us to go to Job chapter 9 verse 7. Job Job chapter 9 verse 7. Okay. Before we read Job chapter 9 verse 7, let's go to Judges chapter 5 verse 20. Judges 5:20. Judges 5:20. Give me two verses before Verse 18. Give me verse 18. Ah, yeah. Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. Wait, you're in Genesis. I'm talking about Judges. Yes, verse 18. Okay. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that what? <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> huh? Okay, jeopardized their lives unto, unto the death in the higher places of the field. Verse 19. The kings came and fought, then fought the king of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of what? Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from where? Now, these are physical men. Praise God. These are physical men. The Bible says they fought from heaven. It says the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. It says the river of Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river of Kishon, oh my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Now, let's, don't just, Nini, let's go on. Um, I want you to give me um, okay now let's read the verse that I told you okay uh, give me verse 8 okay mm -hmm. no give me verse 5 let's start from 5 go to 7 which removes the mountains, um, they know not, which overturns them in his anger, which shakes the earth out of our place, and the pillars thereof tremble, verse 7, which commands the sun, and it rises not, and seals up the stars. Okay? I want you to write these verses down, eh? because they will help us somewhere. So, so uh, give me um, Psalms. Okay, Job 22:12. Job 22, 12. Mm. Job. Job. Yeah. 
don't have time. Don't have time. Let's read this one last. Okay. Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. Now listen. And you say, how does God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Now, just write these verses. Eh? They will make sense as we continue. Okay? Just write them down. Now, let me say this. God deals with man according to how he has aligned time. So, so. God deals with man according to what? Okay? Jesus goes to a wedding. Okay? And there was no wine. And then the mother of Jesus comes to Jesus, says, uh, Jesus, there is no wine. Do something. Praise God. What did Jesus say? Huh? Yes. His time has not come. But did Jesus do what the mother requested? Why? No, I want you to see this. Jesus is not compromising. Because with God, there is no compromise. God doesn't break his word to please you. <laughs> Praise God. Everything God does. See, let me tell you. Because some, sometimes we, we, have, we have been very carnal. We don't understand the spirit world. In the spirit world, what rules there are ordinances and laws. Praise God. Have you heard that the devil entered heaven and instead of God chasing him out, huh, God begins to ask, where have you been? <laughs> have you seen Job, my servant? In fact, in, in, in Chronicles, there is a story that is given that God in heaven huh, was asking for a spirit that would go and deceive the king. God asking for a spirit that would go and deceive the king. Now, when you read it because you are too carnal, <laughs> you think God is emotional. God doesn't move with emotion. Now, there is a current position of the Holy Spirit. And you see, there is a reason why we have been called the body of Christ. Praise God. It has been given to us to determine times and seasons here on earth. Okay. Let's stand. Let's stand. There's something I want us to do. Just a little bit. According to our time right now, okay, According to our time, there is a display that is supposed to be seen in the body of Christ that is being building up, that has been building up, but it is not yet fully manifested. Praise God. According to God, by this time, there is how the youth church should be. It's very hard to teach some things because when I come, I've started from beginning to end. Now, when I'm come, I'm teaching you from the end. So it's very hard if I don't take you from where it started. You get what I'm saying? Now, God sent us here to do some few things. And particularly, we are here for the youth church. So I want you guys to listen to me. Give me... First John chapter 2 verse 12. First John chapter 2. Okay. Let's read. Listen, this is a display. 
he's talking to the young men and he's not telling them something they will do. He's not telling them you will overcome the wicked one. He's telling them you have overcome. This is news he's giving you. It, it is already done. So he's reporting. All right, let's continue. Pause. He's saying, this is a display. If you are supposed to check how the youth in the body of Christ are supposed to be doing, number one, he says, they are supposed to be a sign of victory. They are supposed to be a display of victory. That we can look at our young people and we have no doubt they have overcome the devil. Let me tell you, youth in church are not supposed to be fighting peer pressure in the world. We are not supposed to come here tell you how not to sleep around. If you are there, you have not seen something in God. You think <laughs> we are supposed to be doing missions, eh? and we are not going to streets to preach. The missions we are doing, tunaendea wale wameziku na shetani huko. Huko ndani. Because it's a display of victory. We are not going to overcome the devil. We have already overcome. So when we are coming, we are coming to institute the victory. The second thing is the display of strength. The display of what? Of strength. We are the ones who are supposed to be being sent. Mama nakuja nasema. Nimeitwa mission mahali, nimeitwa nikahubiri mahali. Anachukua John tena mwambia wewe enda. And she knows and is confident. Whatever you will do there, the devil will cry. What do you think Paul was doing with Timothy? Paul sends Timothy, says, he will teach you my ways in the Lord. Youth, some of you, okay, you know, you have not captured what God, you see, ministry is dependent on the word God gave a man. There is something God dropped in mom's heart to begin this. If you don't know that, and that is why Joshua was being carried by Moses. If God tells Moses something, Joshua hears. So when Moses is gone, Joshua can manage because he is carrying what started this thing. What do you have of what mom carries with God? What do you have? Hmm? Hmm? What do you have? What do you have? There is a display that is supposed to be in the youth church. Because it's the right time. Alright. Let's finish. And the word of God abides in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. He repeats it. Now, the that display is supposed to be of the word. Let me tell you. Youth church will never survive with entertainment. I'm telling you, I'm youth. Some of you are older than me. Youth. I'm not talking about the elderly. I'm 24. Huh? <laughs> yes, I can see the judging minds. The word of God is supposed to come out of you like fire like water praise God the church the youth church will never survive with entertainment and I want you to try this if there are leaders of youth here listen to me establish a foundation of the word 
Wacha wenye wanaboweka waboweke. The glory comes the glory begins to grow. That is the glory that attracts people. Last year we did a concert in Nairobi Cinema. It was attended by over 1500 youths. The auditorium was packed. The outside was packed. Tukakatazwa watu waingie. Kambiwa is too much. Now we are looking for another venue. And it's youth. Some of them are not even born again. They don't know what they are coming to do. It's glory. And we started with the word. We started with one hour sessions of teaching the word. In someone's compound. We didn't have shelter. To look at shift na jua. Ikikuja isaid to na shift. Tunanda wakivuli. And no one knew. Listen. Youth. You will not take Nakuru until you have won your other people. There is a display that is supposed to be seen in the youth of this church that has not been seen before. I had to say that. I'm sorry for using more time. <laughs>